Uh, dear God, we thank you for this wonderful time where we as your family could come and encourage, discuss, share with one another uh, the present truth message of the hour. We ask the Lord to please be with us this time. May you guide us. We give you the Holy Spirit. May you teach us. May you show us, uh, Lord, for the wonderful time, that, uh, the wonderful message uh, that you've given us, that we may understand it and that we may see through these messages, uh, through the presentations, uh, the way that we need to love you. We ask you, Lord, to please be with us in this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. For my presentation, uh, I'm going to continue with the presentation that I, I did the last uh, for our TMW class. And it's, it's one of Elder Tess's uh, presentations this year around March. It was a presentation she did in, uh, for a camp meeting. Um, and, and, and I just reviewed her, her presentation that she did early this year around March um, that Elder Tess presented. Uh, just a few minutes at this beginning, I will just review uh, quickly uh, what I have presented in the previous presentation, just to um, refresh our mind uh, on the important points that, that Elder Tess emphasized uh, in that presentation, uh, in that first part of the presentation, and then I'm going, to, we're going to continue with uh, the next part of our presentation, um, which is basically focused on, um, uh, because there's, which I'm going to repeat later, there, there was a few people within the movement all across the world uh, uh, because of the presentation has become in more on political uh, people, there was an emphasis on that we should teach more of the love of God. Um, should teach more, the emphasis more on, on that we should teach more of the love of God. Uh, and what Elder Tess did was to show uh, the presentations, the method that we use in uh, looking at external events, uh, how uh, making us understand what equality is and what sexism is, is uh, the love of God. And that's where, we, where our study is going to end up uh, this evening, this, this, this morning. Um, just to review quickly on what uh, Elder Tess will present for my last presentation, uh, I will just take us to, I hope this is clear. Um, she started with saying uh, that sin began in heaven with Satan, okay? Uh, and then sin left heaven and was cast down onto this earth. Um, and, and she emphasized how when it, left heaven, came onto this earth, just review, and I know that most of us uh, were familiar with this, uh, it was thrown, down, thrown into this earth, and it begins to invade uh, th this earth, and, and it's going to go through all this, this period, uh, time, and, and, and it's going to enter back into heaven, uh, as you see here. After this earth, it's going to go back to heaven, uh, sin is going to enter again into heaven where, um, where it's, it, will, it will be removed or eradicated forever uh, in the mind or th uh, thoughts of people uh, that, that, that had. Okay. Uh, in order to understand this, um, she gave examples, uh, the test gave examples on how um, Abraham, for example, Abraham uh, who had slaves, uh, while he was here, uh, who were the head of the family at that very moment, uh, and Sarah, how Sarah always addressed Abraham as, as my Lord, uh, uh, stating that he is superior than her. Uh, they, when they die, they go with that mindset, with that, that thought of slavery is okay, and uh, that thought of um, calling my Lord, Sarah calling Abraham, my Lord, uh, they will have that kind of mindset as they enter heaven. Um, and this is where, how sin enters, uh, enters heaven. Uh, I remember because uh, after I presented that, there were a few questions that people asked me later. Uh, what do you mean by sin entering heaven? How does sin enter heaven? 
so that's how sin entered into heaven through the mindset that that many of the patriarchy, many of Abraham, the Old Testament people, when they die, they still had certain thoughts or beliefs in their mind. Uh, and they took that kind of thought into heaven where we, uh, the 144,000 is going to uh, reteach them and make set their mindset in the right angle and say that slavery is not right, uh, sexism is not good, uh, and etc. Okay, and that's how it will enter heaven. So, and, 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 and Abraham, and one thing we needed that Elder Tess did was she, she made us understand uh, how uh, the reason why they're going to go with that thought because they did not, that was not the light for that time in, in a sense. The, Abraham did not know that slavery was correct because that was not a light for, for his time. For, for Abraham, he saw that uh, darkly. Uh, in grass and 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 whereas Ellen G. White, when we go down to Ellen G. White, she saw slavery uh, clearly, uh, and also she said that it's an an, uh, an excusable, inexcusable sin, evil, uh, that it's really bad. It's 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 the sin that God hates, um, and then and then that's how um, how Elder Tess presented her her presentation on 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 this topic, and. What she did, uh, what what we did also in the last um, presentation, uh, is that Elder Tess began to use um, examples of that we see in the in the. Uh, let me just put it this way: what what Elder Tess did is she took examples of race, race things that deals with race or slavery, okay, uh, in order to explain in order to explain uh, things that's going to happen with, with gender or sexism. Uh, I, I will try and get us to understand what I mean by here. I'll just give an example. And one example that, that she gave was, okay, she used ham. Okay, here, this is ham here. Uh, and ham is the topic of slavery or race. So what she did was she used ham and the curse that was given to ham, okay, by God was given to ham, the curse was given to ham, okay? And, and just watch how, how Elder Tess, uh, uh, very, how, how should I put it? How Elder Tess used you know the principles that she found out from here in order to explain sexism and and she's saying that that the, the word that she exactly says that in order to understand sexism the race is the key uh to understand sexism or how it works or how it operates um then then she took ham as an example she took ham as an example uh and the curse that was pronounced to ham and then what she did what elder test did was she took that curse Okay, she took that curse and then she, she mentioned something. She said that curse did not happen same time to Ham. That curse did not happen to Canaan, who the curse was pointing to. He says, your son, uh, your son Canaan, eh? uh, did not happen uh, to Canaan. And she said it happened generations, generations uh, down the line after Canaan. Okay, uh, so that was few generations after after Canaan. Then the curse, uh, what should I say? The curse happened. Okay, there, there was the first slavery that ever happened. And what she what she did is that she took this, which is race. Okay, which is race. She took this, and then she took us to. Uh, Eden uh, with Eve. Eh? I'll just say, okay, I'll put gender, gender issue, and she took us to Eve. Okay, we know that there's not much information uh, that God that's in the Bible that gives us or tells us anything about Eve uh, and what happened to Eve after God pronounced the curse to her. Okay. 
And, and the only way we can, that Elder Tess, what Elder Tess did was the only way that we can understand what happened to Eve was just looking at getting the principles of, from, from what happened to Ham. So we see that Ham, uh, that the curse did not happen on Ham or his son, uh, but it happened sometime down the line. So same thing with Eve. There's no evidence in the Bible that when God pronounced the curse on Eve, that that curse, uh, Eve experienced that curse. Uh, I, I'm talking about the curse of gender, the curse of patriarchy or headship. Okay, Eve, there was no evidence in the Bible or any, any statement uh, that tells that that happened with Eve, that Eve experienced that curse herself. Uh, but the principle that, that we see with him, that generations down the line, okay, this, this curse of headship then began to become uh, or was seen in, in the history of this earth. So that was one example that, that Elder uh, Tess used just to show us in order to understand gender or sexism, we, we should use race as an example. Um, and another, and, and what, what she did, continued doing was she began to use Ellen G. White's quotations uh, to get us to understand uh, the, the, the principles that we have here, okay? She went ahead and she used, she went and see Patriarch and Prophets. Uh, at your own time, you can read this, Patriarch and Prophets, page 181, paragraph one. And she pick, pick up uh the, the point where it says that the curse that was pronounced to ham was a prophetic curse uh, which means that it was pronounced to, to ham but it was going to be fulfilled sometime in the future okay that's what prophetic curse mean uh and also she she quoted sw page 60 uh paragraph three sorry paragraph three which states, and she quoted, she, she quoted this point of that the entire system of slavery uh, originated with Satan, okay? So she used that quotation and what it says, okay? So what she did was this, with this one, the prophetic curse, okay? Prophetic curse, what she says, the prophetic curse was pronounced on him uh, then what Elder Tess did that she says, so with Eve. That she used this, what she, uh, Elder, 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 Ellen G. White said about Ham, then she used it to explain about Eve, that it was a prophetic curse also to Eve. Then the second point that she was sharing with SW 60 paragraph three was that sin originated, the sin of slavery, sin of slavery, originated with Satan, okay? And, and what she, Elder Tess did, that she, she explains that the sin of slavery originated with Satan. Then she says, then what she said was, she took this principle that sin originates with Satan. Then she uh, said that also the sin of sexism or gender originated with Satan. So I hope you see the principles or the method that she is using, uh, taking race to explain gender. Uh, and, and that's exactly what Elder Tess was doing uh, with her, her presentations. Then she took us to uh, Adventist Home, page 151. Uh, 115, sorry. Adventist Home, page 115. 115, paragraph 1. Um, we already had, uh, we read this in my last presentation. And she picked out uh, the sexism that is within Ellen G. White's writing. And she began to, Elder Tess began to focus on that. Uh, how she began to speak about Eve and the curse that was pronounced to Eve. And Ellen G. White, uh, she quoted this, where. This, this portion, I'll just quote this portion where she says um, that this system of submission or patriarchy, I, I'm just giving the word patriarchy, as Elder Tess mentioned it, would have uh, proved a blessing 
to them or to human beings. Okay, so what she's saying is that headship could have been, or patriarchy could have been a blessing to human beings if they followed it according to God's will. Okay, that's what Ellen G. White says if you read her quotations. And what Elder Ter said was, she disagrees with Ellen G. White in that point, eh? in the sense where she says, um, that any form of patriarchy, no matter how beautiful we may de depict patriarchy or headship and uh, you know, give beautiful words um, about headship or patriarchy. And as Ellen, G as Ellen G. White says, it could have been a blessing. It will never be a blessing. Uh, it cannot, uh, it does not look good towards God. Um, in matter of fact, uh, Elder Ter says this, even the most beautiful depiction about headship and conservative Adventist can picture, we need to understand that it grew out of sin. What grew out of sin? Patriarchy, gender, sexism grow out of sin as the principle that was had. And, and, and exactly that's what, what, what the presentation were, were going through and how she used uh, race to, to make us understand how sexism will look like or how, what's going to happen within, within uh, things. So do we blame, uh, do we, what does that mean? Does we, do we reject Ellen G. White? No, we do not reject Ellen G. What does that mean, that Ellen G. White was wrong? No. What that means is the only thing that we need to keep in mind why Ellen G. White says that slavery is the sin in her time was because it was the life for her time. She did not have, um, what should I, they don't have the light about gender, sexism, patriarchy, and how evil it is as we do now. Uh, so in, in, in that context, we do not blame Ellen G. White because it was not uh, the light for her time. Uh, but as we enter heaven, uh, this is what we're going to uh, educate Ellen G. White with. Um, and she says, even, you know, if, if only we can just take away these pretty pictures uh, that we uh, in the movement have about uh, anything to do with patriarchy, it would be this, this beautiful picture of patriarchy, it, it would be much easier uh, in our life. Um, and, 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 and the movement would, would then move, run smoothly. Uh, so we need to understand that, that Ellen G. White saw um, sexism darkly in a glass, eh? so through a glass darkly when it comes to sexism or gender issue. Okay, uh, we, we uh, look at sexism face to face, or we, we see it more clearly, okay? That only when we are willing, if only we are willing to see, we will be able to see and un really understand what sexism is and how evil it is if we are willing to see it. Um, and then, and and, and, and then what she began to do was, and which, which for me was, was, was very encouraging also was when she went into the line of Christ, when she went into the line of Christ, when she went into the line of Christ, and then what she did was, she began to explain the struggle that, and, 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 and how the struggle that Christ went through when he was trying to um, was trying to undo the mindset of the Jewish nation, um, and and what how Ellen uh, Elder Tess did was you know what Christ was trying to undo was just this portion, okay? The mindset, mindset, or the beliefs of the Jewish people, okay? So if you look at the line, you'll see this is exactly uh, what Christ was trying to undo. 
just this history from the beginning of uh, this time until um, until Christ time. Okay, so those that based upon this line, I would say that small history, uh, Christ was trying to undo uh, the mindset, the thinking of the Jewish people, the Jewish nation at that time. So the the, the errors of sanctuary, centuries of uh, years, uh, centuries of error. Um, and then it's very interesting that we see how it wasn't an easy thing with Christ. He, he faced with a lot of struggles, uh, arguments, accusation was given to Christ. Uh, he was even deemed as a devil uh, and he was even put to death. Uh, and then he went through a lot just trying to undo this mindset that the Jewish nation had. Uh, and the encouraging thing for me when Elder Tess said, uh, that's the struggle that Christ went through, just trying to undo this probably uh, sanctuaries of errors. And then she put it this way, and, and, and which I also would want to emphasize, and she said, we are trying, okay, for Christ was just this portion, this small blue portion. And then she said, we, I, I will put this, the 144, okay? We are trying to undo the whole line. Okay? We are trying to undo the whole line of restoration. We are trying to remove uh, or change the mindset of people of, of something that was there for the whole history of the earth, uh, which is the, the deepest, the oldest, and the worst form of discrimination, which is sexism. Uh, and you, can, you and I can just imagine, I'll repeat that, you and I can just imagine how hard it's going to be. Uh, how difficult it's going to be to, to, to take this uh, mindset, these things out of the mind of God, uh, mind of, of, of people in the world. And it's important that you and I keep this in mind. And she says, remember, the, uh, she puts it, if we are, try, we are trying to undo the whole line of restoration, if the going is tough, okay, just remember, this that we are talking about the hardest test God is ever given to man and some something that is deeply rooted in our heart and I will I, I will quote this which we're going to emphasize more as we're going to go to the next quotation she says is which is in our heart which is almost imp to a point where it's almost impossible to remove. So uh, that's just a short, uh, just a review on, on my last presentation. And, 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 and then she began to go on to uh, the sentiments that's, that's going around the movement, which says that we need to focus more on the love of God, uh, that we need to teach more of the love of God. And what, El uh, what uh, Elder Chess began to do was she begins to try and uh teach and show us how what the love of god is and and then she begins to link what the love of god the cross to uh the message of the hour equality or sexism okay now i will want to share screen and i would like us to uh if someone can read this for us i'll see what i can do uh okay this is pr the present truth pr t pr t february 4 1886 paragraph 1 now can i get someone to to read this now she what, what she began to do is 
uh, in this quote, which we're going to discuss later, is she's going, she began to show us uh, what caused or what broke uh, the heart of God, the heart of Jesus, that, that caused a lot of pain for him. Eh? Now, can, can, is, can I get a volunteer to read this, please? I could read that for you, George, if you like. Thank you. Yes, please. The death of Christ. So the whole bit that I can see, yes, yeah? So, yes, yes, okay. It was not the dread of death which caused the inexpressible agony of Jesus. To believe this would be a place to, be, uh, to believe this would be to place him beneath the martyrs in courage and endurance. For many of those who have died for their faith yielded to torture and death, rejoicing that they were accounted worthy to suffer for Christ's sake. Christ was the prince of sufferers, but it was not bodily anguish that filled him with horror and despair. It was a sense of the malignity of sin, a knowledge that man had become so familiar with sin that he did not realize its enormity, that it was so deeply rooted in the human heart as to be well nigh impossible to eradicate. It was the guilt of sin, bringing the father's wrath upon him as man's substitute that broke the heart of, God, of the Son of God. Every pang that he endured upon the cross, the blood drops that flowed from his head, his hands and feet, the agony that racked his frame and the unutterable anguish that filled his soul at the hiding of his father's face. I just got to find my place again now. Um, I think I, I think you've gone a little bit beyond where I was reading. Sorry. Just can you go back up a tiny, tiny bit? Oh yes, I see. Sorry, you didn't. I, I've just yes, you were right. Uh, I found myself again. Unutterable anguish that filled his soul at the hiding of his father's face. Speak to man, saying, It is for love of thee that the Son of God consents to have this, these heinous crimes laid upon him. For thee he spoils the domain of death and opens the gates of paradise and immortal life. He who stilled the angry waves by his word and walked the foam capped billows, who made devils tremble and disease flee from his touch who opened the eyes of the blind and raised the dead to life offers himself upon the cross as the all-sufficient sacrifice for man thank you thank you so much for that you know this is the the pain or the suffering that christ went through eh? Um, can anyone tell me from what they just saw, what, what was that that broke the heart of, of, of Christ or that that caused the most pain to Christ from that quote? Can anyone share with uh, share me what do they get from this quote? The familiarity that human has with sin. Thank you so much. The familiarity of human beings with sin. Okay, how how it was so familiar with them, and then and then she she begins to say, you know, thank you so much, um, and she begins to say that it's so deeply rooted in the heart, as well, nigh impossible to eradicate. Um, you know, it was to a point where. You know, we thank we, we thank God that it did not reach uh, impossibility to remove. Okay, with this code, Ellen Joy saying it was he was reaching a stage where it was almost reaching the point where it was impossible to eradicate sin. Okay, so this this saying that that, that man loves sin so much, 
um, you know, the sin was so familiar with them. It was deeply rooted in the heart of man. This is something that, you know, that broke uh, the heart of the son of God. And he says, it was the guilt of sin bringing the father's wrath upon him as many men substitute that broke the heart of the son of God. Okay. Uh, and this is something that the Christ uh, was, was, was uh, you know, what broke his heart was not bodily pain, but it was, I will just take us out of there. It wasn't bodily pain that, uh, that, bro, uh, no, that, that caused a lot of that Christ suffering um, uh, on the cross, but it was uh, the sense of sin uh, and its sinfulness. Eh? Um, and it's, it, it is because of uh, the sense of sin and its sinful sin and the horror and the despair uh, that, was, that, that was that man was becoming f too familiar with sin. Uh, and it was almost reaching the point where it was impossible to remove it. Okay. But we thank God it did not reach the stage where it was impossible to remove. Okay. Another fact, there was still hope uh, that it could be removed, uh, and that hope was uh, was when Christ sacrificed Himself and gave and uh, provided the way uh, for escape for you and I. Uh, and and and, she's, and, 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 and Elder Chess says that it, this was uh, so deeply rooted in the heart of man, eh? uh, and this sin was deeply rooted in heart, and, and we understand. From the famous uh, statement that we have, that the uh, that sexism is the oldest, the deepest, and um, the oldest, the deepest. What's the other word? And the worst uh, form of discrimination that we ever know of. Uh, and it's important that, that that you and I keep these things in mind. Eh? So it, it was. It was. Uh, it was. Man, how, how sin was deeply rooted in the heart of man. And it was almost impossible that man you know, would, you know, in other words, he says, man, for us, sorry for using man, as human beings um, were too drawn to sin, which separates us from God. And he had to experience that when he was separated from God. Uh, and how he saw that, it's going to be a struggle. It's, it's not something that's going to be easily accepted by human beings. Uh, and he, he, it's going to be a struggle. Uh, but through his love for you and I, that he gave up and demonstrated his love when he gave himself up at the cross. Uh, and this is what Elder Tess was, uh, was, was presenting to us in, in that presentation, how she began to explain that to you and I. Um, and the next uh, quotation, which I want like us to uh, read also, which she also used. Uh, let me get someone to read this. Can I get someone to read this, uh, please? This is taken from uh, education, page one, two, three, eh? one, two, three, paragraph two. One, two, three, paragraph two. Can someone read this uh, for us, please? I read, George. Naka. Mental and spiritual development. For the mind and the soul, as well as for the body, it is God's law that strength is acquired by effort. It is exercise that, that develops, develops in harmony with this law God has provided in his word, the means for mental and spiritual development. Thank you. Continue. continue. Oh, please. Yeah, continue, please. The Bible contains all the principles that man need to understand in order to be fitted either for this life or for the life to come. And these principles may be understood by all. 
no one with a spirit to appreciate its teaching can read a single passage for, from the Bible without gaining from it some helpful thought. But the most valuable teaching of the Bible is not to be gained by occasional or disconnected study. Its great, a great system of truth is not so presented as to be discerned by the hasty or careless reader. Many of its treasures lie far beneath the surface and can be obtained only by diligent research and continuous effort. The truths that go to make up the great whole must be searched out and gather up here a little and there a little. Thank you so much, uh, Saini, for that. Um, just, just the point that I uh, was trying to emphasize, you know, it says here with the underlying points, it says uh, it is exercise that develops uh, our mental and our spiritual development. Eh? And it says God has provided his word, the means of mental and spiritual development. Uh, or as, as the movement's language is faith and practice. Eh? Uh, when you and I understand the message of the hour, the, you need to exercise this. And when we begin to exercise these uh, principles, uh, this by living up to the light that we have, uh, this is what, how our uh, mental and our spiritual uh, will be developed. And if we do not exercise it, if we do not live by it, um there will be no 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 development there will be uh stagnant you and i will be stagnant no development in our life no change in our lives uh so the the important point that i'm trying to emphasize in paragraph one is the exercise part that you in order to develop our spiritual life and mental uh development eh? and 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 what in the word or or what uh, are we to try and get out of, of all these Bible verses that we use, Ellen White quotations, or even external events? Uh, what are we are to get out of it that has this, uh, that will help us to, to develop and to change our lives? And he says, the Bible contains all the principles that men need to understand in order to be fitted either for this life or for the life to come. And these principles may be understood by all. Eh? Um, and, and you know, basically, it's the principles that you and I need to uh, get out whenever we read the Bible or get a Bible verses or Ellen White quotations, or even when we begin to use um, external events, articles, you know, we need to see the core of what God is trying to teach us in there. Those principles is exactly what's, what, what you and I need to understand. Uh, just like what I did with, with what Elder, Elder Tess did with um, how she got the principles from Ham's, what happened to Ham, and she begins to apply that same principle, which never changes, down to racism. And this is one uh methodology that we usually do uh, is trying to find these principles and also apply it uh, in the, uh, spiritually uh and it's, it's very important that you and i keep that in mind um you know it said here that what caused the greatest pain uh or what broke christ's heart was uh sin let me just say that basically it was seen, you know, especially uh, that human beings were so familiar with sin that it's going to, he knew that it was going to be very hard for, for to, to remove this and the struggle that human beings will have. And, 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 and he, you know, this is what that Bible, uh, that quotation said that was broke his heart. Now, there's another quotation that uh, Elder Tess used which is Steps to Christ, page 13. I will get someone, if someone, if it's, uh, someone can also read uh, from here. It's Steps to Christ, page 13, paragraph one. Eh? Okay. 
Okay. Can someone read this one, please? All right, Judge. Thank you, Molly. Behold him in the wilderness in Gethsemane upon the cross. The spotless son of God took upon himself the burden of sin. He who had been one with God felt in his soul the awful separation that sin makes between man and uh, God and man. This rung from his lips the anguish cry, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Matthew 27, 46. It was the burden of sin, the sense of its terrible enormity, of its separation of the soul from God. It was this that broke the heart of the Son of God. Thank you so much. So what broke the heart of the Son of God? It is the burden of sin, the sense of its terrible enormity, of its separation of the soul from God. And he and Christ himself experienced that. You know, he, he experienced when our sins were placed upon him, um, he was separated from, his, uh, from, from God. He was separated from God. And this was the greatest pain that Christ ever experienced. The separation from God because of sin. And he experienced uh, what humans were experiencing. And he had the choice at that very moment eh? uh, in Gethsemane. He had the choice to, you know, he had the freedom, I could say freedom, he, to choose whether to go ahead with it or to uh, go ahead with, with by dying in the cross or went ahead, dying on the cross, or he just stopped it right there at that very moment and returned back to heaven. Uh, and it, this is the love of Christ, love of God, that Christ put aside what he's facing, the struggles he's facing, and he sacrificed himself um, to... He sacrificed himself so that you and I may have the hope of hating sin with a perfect hatred, of having the hope through him uh, to have the hope of, of life or eternal life. You know, he gave up. That's, that's what the love of God really means. When, you know, John 3, 16, very famous. He says, for God so loved the world, he loved you and I, that he gave his only son or sacrificed his only son to die on the cross uh, so that you and I may not perish but have everlasting life. That love was then demonstrated at the cross. So the cross itself, when we look at the cross, what Elder Cash was trying just to teach us was, was that when we look at the cross, we need to see what put Christ at that cross, okay? What, what put Christ on the cross and what caused the greatest pain to Christ when he was going through this period uh, leading up to the cross. Um, and it was sin. It was, I can put it this way, how... In the heart of man, they were, it was too so familiar with man. It was to a point, it was uh, something that men, I'm not sure whether I'm saying the right, whether men, men love doing it. You know, they came to a stage, they were beginning to love to do it, you know, um, and it was going to be very hard to remove this, the sin from the heart of man. This is what exactly broke God's, uh, the, the heart of the son of man, and especially the separation. It was the burden of sin and the enormity of, of the, the sin that, 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 that Christ experienced that caused of the most grievous pain uh, to Christ compared to the bodily pain that he went through. Um, this is exactly what 
uh, Christ went through at the cross. It is what, what the love of God is that we need to understand is to hate what God hates. If we say that we love God, then we need to hate what God hates. And one thing that we need to understand that God hates is sin. Okay? But sin is too general uh, for us. For us in these last days, I, I will take us back here. here. Here we are. We are standing here. We are standing right here. Okay? And the sin that God is trying to remove from us right now, the sin that God hates so much, the sin that's breaking God's heart at this very moment, as we can see here, is what? Can anyone tell me? Sexism. It's sexism. And if you want to show God that you love God, and this is how Elder Tess puts it, if, if you want to show God that you love God, that you, you, know, you appreciate what he did on the cross, is that you and I need to hate the sin that God hates. And for us, in the year 2022, family, it's the sin of sexism. It's the sin of patriarchy. It's the sin of headship. It's sexism that's breaking God's heart at this very moment. And if we say that we love God, then we need to hate sexism with a perfect hatred. And this is exactly what Elder Tess was trying to emphasize with her presentations, with the presentations that she did with Vespers. You know, it's trying to reveal to you and I what sexism looks like. And when, when it's revealed to you and I, clearly through external events, through the Vespers presentations, that, through articles, through events that's happening in the world, politics, you and I need to pick out or see sexism in those articles, in those events, and look at it as a radical feminist so that we can hate it and examine ourselves to see whether am I this way? Is this the kind of life? Is this the thoughts? Is this the words? Is this my actions? Because you and I need to realize and pick out from those presentations that Elder Tess did what God hates. And when you know what God hates, when you have the knowledge of it from the quotation that we just read, it's the exercise of it. It's you living up to the truth, the messages what's going to develop our spirituality, our mental and spiritual development. This is exactly what it means to, to love God. And to love God means to hate what God hates. And God hates the sin of sexism. Therefore, you and I need to hate the sin of sexism with the perfect hatred. You know, Elder Tess Put it this way, and, and I like this question. Um, every time we speak of equality, we need to keep something in mind. Um, let me put it this way: the cross, okay, the cross in Christ's time, the cross, okay. What does the cross line up with in our time? Can anyone share with us? Uh, what is the, uh, the cross lines with us? 2019. Okay, thank you so much. So the cross lines 
in our time, in, in our dispensation, in our period, it lines up with 2019. Okay. It, it lines up with 2019. Okay. What was a myth, what was a message that Christ uh, was trying to emphasize at this time period at the cross? What was the message that he was trying to uh, share or get his disciples to understand? Equality. Yeah, yeah, in this time. The nature of his kingdom. In Christ's time. The nature of his kingdom, yes. Okay, let's go to John. Let's go to John. Eh? Let's go to John. A time period just before the cross. Eh? I think the night, uh, the same night of Gethsemane. Now let's go to John. Read aloud. Yes. Um, let's go to John. Let's, let's read chapter 13. Verse 34 and 35. Can, some, can, can I get a volunteer to read uh, this, please? I can read. Yeah, thank you. A new commandment I have given, I have give you, give to you that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also are to love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Thank you. So basically, if you, if you go see clearly what, what Christ was trying to emphasize through his sacrifice on the cross and also his counsel to his disciples was to love. Okay, it was the heading of love. Okay, he was teaching them and telling them, you need to love one another. You need to love others. If you're going to see, his, his focus was to love others. Okay, love one another. Okay, because he understood that they, that wasn't happening in this time period. Okay, so that's exactly what was breaking, you know, Christ's heart was looking at his disciples and seeing them wanting to be the greatest. Uh, to be the leader, to be, you know, I can, I can use this word, the, uh, the head. Okay, patriarchy is still in the mindset of, uh, of the disciples. Who is the greatest? Okay, and what God and what Christ was trying to emphasize to them before his thing that, you know, I, I would suggest that this is exactly what Christ was seen in the upper room experience. That's why he did the foot washing. That's why he did all these things in, in that night, just to try to teach uh, his disciples uh, at that night before the cross was, you know, they need to have the heart of love. They need to have love in their hearts. And love is to, is to care or, you know, humble yourself is to care for others. Basically, that's exactly, I'm just giving a, a brief explanation on that. Now, that's love in Christ's Self. time. So his main point that he was trying to selflessness. Thank you. Uh, dying to self. You know, that's what, what Christ was trying to teach at the cross. Okay. So since the cross is lining up with 2019, can someone tell me what was the light that, 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 be, that, that, that or the message that God was, began to give us in 2019? Well, Thank you. It's equality. It's equality. So we see that equality equals to the love of God. 2019, let me just put it this way. 2019 equals to the cross. Okay. The message here is equality, which is equal to the message here is love. And to be more specific, equality, this is about sexism, gender. That is what the love of God is when we apply it in our time. And exactly what Elder Chess is doing with trying to make us see how sexism looks like, what sexism is, how it is being 
um, practiced by people in the world, people in the church, examples, what Elder Chess is doing with those presentations is really teaching us what the cross was trying to teach all of us at this very moment. Uh, and it is very important that you and I keep this in mind. This is what the love of Christ, if we, if we say that we need to learn and understand what the love of Christ is, uh, family members, Elder Tess has been doing a very good job in doing that. Because what she's doing is that she's really showing us what sexism, how sexism, what sexism really looks like. Maybe we could did not see what how how evil, how deeply rooted is sexism in our hearts. And with the, her vespers, with her presentations, with the external events, what she is doing is she is just trying to reveal to you and I how deeply, you know, any what what the presentation is going to begin to do is going to begin to dig out that scene of sexism that's still rooted deep in our hearts. So if you want to learn about the love of Christ, what we've been learning through our leaders, through Elder Tess, Elder Cominda, and all our leaders, especially on this topic of gender or sexism, we are, we are learning the love of God. It may not look the way we think it should look. And you know, everyone, every time when we teach the love of God, the love of Christ, everyone's mind go literally to the cross. I think Elder, Elder Pominda emphasized this and he says how, how we try to take this literal and then begin to apply it literally here. So it's important that you and I keep these things in, in mind eh? and, and hope we see love in equality uh, and hope that we, we see the cross in the messages that we are learning now in equality, the external events. Because people always, some, some say this, you know, I, uh, I don't see uh, how this ex learning these external events have to do anything with my spirituality or with my salvation. How does it change me? We need to understand that by looking at the external events, they, they are showing us and telling us exactly the scene of sexism is how it looks like. And as Elder Puminda said, they are the second prophets. Therefore, they, it, 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 they are messengers of God. Therefore, it's just like these external events. I, I can put it this way these external events are just like the and and how the news or reporters the news has been depicting it it's just like a mirror in front of you and i okay uh, I, I just put it it's just like a mirror in front of us when we look at external events and what you and i need to do when we look at it and and understand uh and, and look at it as a radical feminist what you and i need to do is to examine ourselves Treat external events just like you treat the word of God, Ellen Z. White's writings. And when you and I begin to do that, you and I will really, really appreciate the messages that Elder Tess has been presenting to us. And it will begin to change our mindset. Not only our mindset will begin to change our heart, will begin to change our life. If we say that we love God with a perfect, uh, you know, perfectly, we, we want to love God. The only way to show that you love God is to hate the sin that he hates and that's sexism. And it's important that you and I keep this in mind. I just want to conclude with this Bible, Bible verses. Um, I would like us to turn to First John. Uh, let's go to First John, chapter three. We know that John 
is is a right uh, that that also always depicts the love of God. Okay, uh, and 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 I would like want us to you know in in that present time how John began to explain how we demonstrate love or how do we show that we love God. Eh? I know this is uh, some Bible verses that many of us are familiar with, but I just want to conclude with this before we we pray. First uh, John three, I will begin reading from verse eleven, and then we'll go to chapter four. Okay. And I will read this. He says, and this is the message that he heard from the beginning. That we should love one another. Okay. Same message here. Okay. Not as Cain. Who was of that wicked one and slew his brother. Please keep that in mind. Very deep and very important that you to keep this in mind. Okay. And wherefore slew he him. Because his own works were evil and his brother's righteous. Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hates you. Okay. We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Very important words. Whosoever hateth, his brother is a murderer, and he know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Hereby perceive we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whoso hath his words goods and seeth his brother have need and sattered up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue. Don't just mention equality. Don't just, oh, sexism, we need to put away headship, patriarchy. Not just speaking it by words or in tongue. He says here, but in deed and in truth. Matter of fact, you need to practice that. Okay. And he continues and says, And hereby we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. For if our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. So you see here how it's just trying to tell us what the love of God is. And it is to love others. Basically, how you demonstrate that you love God is when you begin to love others. In our context, this is what equality is, what sexism is trying to teach us, how you mistreat others, uh, how you want to be better than others. And it's even more deeper than that. But I hope you get the principles, uh, the main points that, 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 that John is trying to teach us, which God is trying to teach us here. And, and you see what the love of God is. He's speaking about this dispensation. And he's, this is what love is. is to love your brethren. Love, love your fellow men. No matter what uh, race, sex, gender, or wh whatever they are in. We need to treat them the same. Eh? Um, and it's very important. Chapter 4, verse 7. He says, Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not, no, loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that he sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. Herein is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loves us, we ought also to love one another. This is exactly what Elder Chess is trying to present, what equality is trying to teach us. Okay, it says, Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought to love also love one another. No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. Hereby know we that we dwell in him and he in us, because he 
have given us of his spirit. I'll jump down to verse 16. And we have known and believed the love that God had to us. God is love and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect that we might have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is, so are we in this world. Okay, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth about fear because fear had torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. If a man say, the famous Bible verse that we mainly use in the movement says, if a man say, I love God and hated his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? Instead of putting the word of love, we put the word equality or sexism. How can we say that we love God and you and I are still practicing sexism? How can you and I say that we love God and there's still patriarchy, headship rooted deep in our heart? The words we speak, the thoughts we speak, uh, we think, our actions still shows that sexism is still in our hearts. How can we say we love God? When you, do, you and I are not practicing the sin that really God hates, that God, that breaks God's heart at this very moment. And that's the sin of sexism. I hope that we've seen uh, and we've understood and how Elder Tess puts it, how what she does and she says the message of equality and how she also compared it to the message of the cross. And exactly what she's doing in Vespers, in her presentations, it is the love of God. And how she's showing us the love of God. And I hope and pray that we'll be encouraged. Uh, you know, we'll go through hardship, trials. It's not easy. But God will, will be with us. He will guide us. He will lead us. He will help us. Uh, and, and if we are willing, if we are willing, then if we are willing to, um, the sin of sexism can be removed from you and I. Is the sexism is the oldest, the deepest, it's the worst uh, form of discrimination. It's something that is more deeper rooted in our hearts than any other sin. But as the quotation said, it was almost impossible. Okay? That means we still have hope. It can be removed, but you need to be willing. As Elder Tess said, you need to be willing for the Holy Spirit, for God to remove it from our heart and be obedient to the message we have now. With those words, uh, I'd like to thank you for your time. Uh, and I will, I will close with a word of prayer and probably can, if there's any questions or any comments that anyone would want to share, then we will. Uh, then the floor will be opened. I will close with a prayer and then we can have uh, questions, answers or comments later. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for the message of equality. We thank you for your messenger that you've given Elder Tess. We thank you for trying to do the work of saving us by revealing to us the sinfulness of sin, the sinfulness of the sin of this present time, which is sexism, of patriarchy, headship, and how it will separate us from you. Lord, I submit uh, your people into the hands. Help us to see the sinfulness of sin. Help us to realize what broke your heart and that we need to. Stop breaking your heart. Help us to live up to the light that you've given us. 
help us to be willing uh, to allow you to do the wonderful work of removing this hideous, deepest, worst sin of sexism, discrimination in our hearts. Lord, please be with us for the rest of this Sabbath. Especially, Lord, I pray for our leaders, Elder Tess uh, and Elder Pominda. Uh, may you continue to be with them and continue to enlighten them, continue to strengthen them, Lord. Uh, just as Christ went through trials, uh, hardship, pain, it was not easy. Um, you know, these are things that we're going to struggle. We are dealing with, as you mentioned, we are dealing with a sin that is much deeper, rooted deep in the heart. It's the oldest and the deepest. And just imagine what Christ went through. We could just imagine what, uh, the amount of struggles that we're going to go through. But Christ gained victory, and you have promised victory to us. And we thank you for that. We commit this day into the hands, commit our lives into the hands, and we Thank you so much for this great platform where we could share and encourage one another with the present truth. We pray and ask all of these things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.